come back once again as we draw even closer to the results of the 2015 general election. Let's get straight over to our reporter, Joe Turton, at the Leeds Direct Arena for the latest at the count where things are really hotting up. OK, so I'm here with Simon Wilson, the Conservative candidate standing for Leeds North East. Simon, how are you feeling, mate? Well, it's been a long, tiring, but very enjoyable campaign, and really it's up to the public now how they've voted, what the outcome will be. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it and looking forward to the result. We think we've got a good chance of, of winning this seat for the first time in 17 years. A good chance it does seem, especially with the exit polls as they are, which see Conservative hedging it, yeah. some would say. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I think it's fantastic. It's a real vindication of what we've been trying to do for the last five years getting the economy back on track, cutting the deficit, creating jobs, apprenticeships, better schools, cutting crime, helping pensioners, really getting the country back on its feet. So if the, if, if the, you know, if the voters have said, yes, you've done a good job and here's another five years, I think that's a fantastic indication of what the government's been trying to do for the last five years. And if you were to get the seat at Leeds North East, mm -hmm. um, what sort of things would you implement? I really want to be fighting for the people in Leeds North East. There are pockets of Leeds North East that suffer real deprivation and they have done for years and it, it concerns me that really nobody's addressed that. So one of the things that I would like to do is to try and bring, give the opportunities that we have provided across the country to the people that really need it the most in Leeds North East. So I'll be working very hard every day to support those people and everyone to represent them in Westminster and not the other way around. Lovely Simon, thank you very much. Thank you. Stay tuned for more tonight. Tweets just in from our wonderful viewers. Holly Betty says, I'm keeping up to date with all the election thanks to Leeds Hacks. Alex Nunn says, five more years of Tory rule is terrible news for the poor and disadvantaged. And G says, Leeds Hacks coverage is making me really proud to be a member of the university. You go guys. Thanks Gs. Let's bring you right up to date with what has been happening. So far, only three seats have been declared. All three went to Labour. Exit polls suggest that Conservatives could once again win with the more seats. Let's get some views from our guests on the potential outcomes. Well, so far, the BBC have expected the Greens to potentially win a seat down in Norwich South. Uh, the electoral officials have been saying that it's been a higher turnout to possibly 70%, which would be a 5% increase on last year, on five years ago turnout. And this just in, the Tories have won their first seat in Swindon North. Wow. Um, so what does the current forecast mean? Well, it's been quite a, like a surprising forecast so far. Due to the exit poll, I think a lot of people have been surprised, most, most prominently because of the SOP could potentially have been ruled out of having any say in what happens in the government coming up now. But mainly because the Conservatives, with such a high three, 316, they could form a rainbow coalition with parties from Ireland and potentially the Liberal Democrats to easily take them over that 326 marker, which a lot of people didn't really expect coming into this election. Yeah, I agree. I think it's been um, actually a, hu a huge shock for people. Um, I think we've been used to seeing kind of like um, in the polls the two the two lines the red line the blue line yeah. like that the whole time um, and now with such a stark difference between Labour and the Tories from the exit polls um, that that's been a real shock for people. Um, I I do wonder like looking on Twitter I do wonder whether um, you know a lot of people don't have faith in the exit poll. Um, in the past, it's always been quite accurate, especially you know in the last few years, it's been very accurate. Um, so it it will be interesting to see. But like I said, a lot of people aren't fully confident about that. Um, but they have they have been interviewing um, on various kind of TV news networks. They've been interviewing um, a lot of people who are in danger of losing their seats. And I think a surprise one perhaps is um, the shadow chancellor Ed Balls. Um, he was looking quite red faced <laughs> earlier on today being interviewed because he, um, you know, they are suggesting that, you know, he could be in danger of losing his seat, which is a little bit of a surprise. I think it'd be very interesting to see what happens with Labour and the SNP. As it was mentioned a lot, Labour did not want to go into an agreement with the SNP. Now that Labour potentially going to lose a lot more seats than they expected, things may change and they may look to the SNP to gain a bit more power in this election. Yeah, so do you think the exit polls could have got a terribly wrong? Going off lap, a few years back in 2010, the margin for error was very, very small. So this year, if that's the same case, I think Labour are in a bit of trouble and the Conservatives could easily just walk back into power with another um, coalition with the Liberal Democrats. And I think we've got to remember as well, the exit polls, while they are, you know, traditionally quite accurate, 
Um, it is only 22,000 people out of kind of the whole of the voting population. So, you know, it is a very, a very tiny number really in the grand, sca sca um, grand scheme of things. So, you know, that it is possible that it could be, it could be way out. Yeah, and do you think there's any particular pros and cons for each party coming into power? Well, obviously the Tories are backing, putting more money back into the N NHS. But obviously that is going to mean cuts to other places which they have not outlined yet. So that could be in with benefits or welfare. So as with Labour as well, they are looking to put more money back into the economy, but that will mean more borrowing, which is not very popular with a lot of people considering the economic downturn of 2008. Yeah, yeah. I think I would. Yeah, I would agree with you. And I think um, the interesting thing we, we saw when the manifestos came out um, was a, a kind of weird role reversal um, between the you know the Tories and Labour. Um, Labour, um, you know, are used to kind of making making promises that people don't always feel that they might be able to keep. Um, but this time around, they did a fully costed manifesto. They they put the economy on the front you know first few pages of, of their manifesto. Um, and led on that, and led on kind of fiscal responsibility, which is, you know, not not typical for them. More of a kind of typical Tory kind of thing. Meanwhile, the Tories have been pledging um, eight million pounds, I think, uh, eight billion pounds, sorry, for the uh, for the NHS, which they haven't costed and haven't said where the money will come from. Um, and I don't think Labour's quite been bold enough to say, you know, this isn't going to happen. You know, they're not going to be able to do that. But you know, a lot of questions have been raised as to where that money might come from. So. Yeah. I think it'll be very interesting to see what policies the other coalition parties will be allowed to implement once they go into a coalition with the Conservatives and what, what outcomes that may bring. Yeah, cool. Um, well, now we have another Hustings video where our reporter NASA address this time found out more about the much talked about election campaign immigration. The Green Party has the highest proportion of women standing in front case in the country. I ran a business for 20 years in graphic design and in Apple Mac systems. Then we came along and we've been restricted again. I, I grew up in Jamaica. I was a bit of a nerd and I liked reading the papers and current affairs things. There is no excuse for uh, for making immigrants feel outside our, main, our, our, our mainstream society. My father suffered from that problem. I read his diaries from the 1930s. He really felt like an alien, um, and he wasn't black. Uh, you know, he didn't look that different, um, and yet he felt as a, like an outsider because his English wasn't his first language. But he did gradually become integrated. Uh, we need to be far, far, far more open-hearted to people who come from outside and embrace them, bring them into our society. I think we have a very, very good way of doing that in the city of Leeds. As for yourself, sir, I believe that by focusing on community, which is where we want to be, you as part of that community should be included and would be included. And I would fight hand, hand over anybody else to, to make sure that you were part of it. So all the old major <laughs> <laughs> the one thing Nigel wants to see is the cohesion of community. I mean, and that that is where, I, I, all right, sometimes it maybe does come across as a bit anti ethnic but in actual fact, the reality is the points based system is to bring people into into the country <coughs> who can contribute to the country and show a okay. a, a desire to be long into okay, the country. Thanks, thanks Paul. Okay, so <laughs> Nigel Farage is not making communities cohesive by blaming absolutely everything on immigration. Exactly. I think that's all we have to say on that one. Uh, uh, Natalie Bennett is an immigrant. We welcome immigrants. We, I've been an immigrant, it's really tough when you're an immigrant in another country. We need to do much more. People need to talk to their neighbours, people in their area who are immigrants, and be welcoming to them and befriend them and find out their stories, because often they've had a really tough time and it's really nice if we actually welcome them and talk to them about what they've been through. On immigration, it comes back to the rhetoric. I didn't mention before, my grandfather was born in Egypt, my mother was born in Paris, in France. It's the same thing all along, is that 
people have a fear when they feel that some, when you get an economic situation that's quite hard, you always turn to the, the, the minority in society to blame, and that is what is happening, unfortunately. And I do think the leaders, I do think the leaders have a stronger role in saying, coming out to say that, you know, when, when you could say that the NHS is under pressure because of immigrants, well, actually, the NHS is staffed by immigrants doing a fantastic job in it. Immigration, how do you feel world immigration is tolerant, treating others as human beings? Tolerance. Uh, well, yeah, you, you, you need to challenge it wherever possible. No, I you think need to challenge your party. What I'm saying is, <laughs> what, what you say you're trying to give is yeah. different to what you know, you only Well, I, 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 I would argue that actually you're wrong with the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the Liberal Democrats uh, actually are a very liberal party, and we've always stood up for uh, taking minority interests forward and, uh, and that issue of tolerance and individual rights. Uh, but also responsibilities on us as neighbours has always been part of our, of our core values. Do you think immigration is an issue which needs to be addressed in this country? Well, immigration is definitely an issue that's been brought to the fore by the emergence of UKIP. And with the emergence of UKIP, we've had a lot more debates about our presence in Europe, which has resulted in David Cameron offering an in-out referendum on Europe. Obviously, Labour took a bit more of a firm stance saying that we need to just stay. He took, like the, he took the role to say, we need to stay in Europe. This is the best thing to do for us. Whereas UKIP are pushing to try and get us to leave Europe because they think too many immigrants are coming into the country. And... Basically, wh whether this happens, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, it's definitely something that, um, you know, has been a massive issue during the election. Um, it's something that all the parties have had to, you know, take a stance on. No one's been able to dodge the question. Um, it's kind of a bit of chicken and egg syn uh, syndrome, I think, because it's, um, we don't know whether um, people are feeling more passionate about immigration and that's hence the rise of UKIP or whether UKIP has led to people feeling more passionate about immigration. Um, so it's quite interesting, but it is one of the few issues in the election where all the parties are taking a slightly different stance and you, you really do get polar opposites. So at one end you get UKIP and at the other end you get the Greens who, um, you know, who are not in favour of of much tighter controls on immigration, so it's it's an interesting issue. It probably wasn't the strongest move by the Labour Party producing a mug saying controls on immigration either. Yeah, that was quite, quite widely condemned. Mm. <laughs> um, well, recently, journalist Mehdi Hassan posted a social media video claiming that immigration is more of a myth than a problem. Would you agree with this? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with him on that point, because when you look at the stats, immigrants contribute more to our economy than they're actually taken away, so there's, there's no real argument there that immigrants are good for our country. And I think um, people, when you, you know, people, people get very emotional about the issue. Um, but like looking at um, what you could actually plan to do um, for immigration, it sounds quite kind of positive, a point points based system. So people like doctors and nurses, engineers, you know, um, are more will be granted uh, immigration more easily than people who are unskilled workers. Um, but that kind of does beg the question. It is something I've heard people talk about: is if um, if you know, we've got our graduates um, coming out of uni with various degrees at the moment. Um, if people come, if people are kind of given favourable immigration from other countries, um, it's going to be a bit tougher for our graduates to get those jobs, the, you know, the engineering jobs, the, you know, the best jobs. Um, and one thing that nobody wants to see is, you know, graduates being forced into kind of very low paid jobs um, that currently a lot of immigrants do do, whether that's, you know, whether people feel that's a good thing or not. You know that is the situation in the UK. You know a lot of a lot of our kind of lowest paid jobs, a lot of the kind of long hours and you know, difficult hours, are being done by immigrants, and that's something that you know people born in the UK would have to take on a little bit more. So whether that's something people want is an interesting thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so now we're joined by one of our very own leads, Hacks Connor Crozier. Um, Connor wrote a piece for our website. Uh, you were due to be a first time voter in this election but decided you wanted to make a conscious decision not to exercise your vote. Is this what happened in the end? Um, well, yeah, I was going to spoil my ballot, but I did end up voting today, actually. Um, so would you mind telling us who you voted for? Yeah, I voted for Greens in the end. And um, any reasons why? A um, couple reasons. When I was writing the article, I kind of realised that spoiling my ballot, I kind of, you know, like, it, it wouldn't make any difference. Like, no one's going to, like, care about spoiling my ballot, even though, like, someone would read it. Um, but I kind of wanted to spoil my, like, my ballot because I want like real change and although none of the parties are offering that real change to me I think Greens maybe in the future could be that party 
and maybe with more support along the way they can like be that party and here I don't think that it's a waste of a vote because it's such a strong Labour um, seat so uh, hopefully that bit more support for the Greens maybe in the future they could be a party of real change. Yeah definitely. Um, how do you feel about the <coughs> exit polls which are currently showing out that Conservatives could take the lead? Um, I kind of don't believe that exit poll just because I've seen the YouGov one as well that shows it's a bit more even which is what like the build up to now has been very even so I kind of believe that one a bit more. I don't think the Tories will get that, that higher majority. Oh that's great. Thank you very much for joining us Connor. Sure. Um, that is it from us once again but be sure to tune out at 2am. The results are not too far away now and please tweet us at Leeds Hacks.